I love the look of old analog photo booths, but finding out exactly what lenses were used in those machines is extremely difficult. It's a subject shadowed in mystery. So I went on a quest to find out what lenses they used and try to recreate that exact look at home. This project forced me to look for answers in the most unusual places. And it all started when my wife and I went for a drink in the French city of Nantes. We were visiting a museum and decided to grab a drink at the museum's cafe before leaving. In the corner, they had a vintage analog photo booth. As I sat there, one question kept circling my mind. What kind of lens is actually inside that thing? So I stepped in to investigate. But all I could see through the dark glass was a solid black door. I realized that the door only opens to reveal the lens for a tiny fraction of a second when the photo is taken, making it impossible to see any details or markings on the lens. I discovered there was almost zero information online about the specific optics used. After spending a massive amount of time researching and hunting down more booths, what I finally discovered was even weirder than I expected. In 1925, Anatole Josepho invented the first fully automated coin-operated photo booth, which he named the Photomaton. Stationed on Broadway near Times Square, the booth offered 8 photos for just 25 cents. The entire process, taking, developing and printing, took roughly 10 minutes. The photo booth was critical in popularizing portraiture for everyday people. At the time, taking a photograph usually required visiting a professional studio, which was a luxury not everyone could afford. It became a vital tool for personal portraiture, providing a safe, private space for people to capture a moment with a loved one or alone without judgment and at a low cost. By the 1960s, photo booths had become a common feature at fairs, shopping centers, and train stations. They were loved by everyone, from John Lennon to the Kennedys. Even the artist Andy Warhol famously employed the booth for his iconic series of paintings. This cultural impact extended to the screen. The act of visiting a photo booth became a staple of movies and advertising. Come on, what is that? What? what are you doing? You just made me waste two dollars. Get off. Come on. Thank you for using photo me. Oh, not at all. Thank you for having me. In the 2001 French film Amélie, the photo booth is an essential element of the story where the pictures become a means of communication between characters, and almost characters themselves. Eventually, the popularity of analog booths declined with the rise of point-and-shoot cameras and instant photography. By the early 2000s, operators were getting rid of their analog machines because digital was seen as a future. Right now, there are fewer than 200 working chemical analog photo booths left in the world. The process itself has not changed. The image is exposed directly on paper and chemically reversed. There are no negatives. In an age of digital excess, having a physical photograph with no other copy is a special and rare thing. Today, companies like Photo Automat and Autophoto are working to preserve this photographic heritage. They restore and maintain the last original analog booths, which can now be found mainly in spaces dedicated to art and culture. Because of a viral trend on social media surrounding these nostalgic booths, they have seen a massive resurgence. 
While shooting this video, I experienced this firsthand. Every photo booth I visited had a line of people waiting to use it, even early in the morning. Seeing this much demand only made me more motivated to figure out what lenses were hidden inside. But after spending too much time in the booth, I started to feel a little claustrophobic. And this is exactly where the sponsor of today's video comes in to help. Outdoor Photography Guide helps you become a better outdoor photographer, no matter if you're a complete beginner or someone more advanced. They've got everything from landscape tutorials to camera settings and photo editing. A few years ago, I did a waterfall photo trip. And I learned that even when capturing a waterfall, you need to tell a story. I'm confident that the waterfall photography section is going to help me do even better shots for my next trip. Outdoor Photography Guide's tutorials are broken down in easy to follow steps that make learning simple and fun. Members get unlimited access to hundreds of outdoor photography tutorials and live events, plus access to a community of like-minded photographers who love sharing new techniques and images. The first 1,000 people watching this video to use the link in my description will get a full year of premium membership to Outdoor Photography Guide for only $1.49. Now back to the lens hunt. After hours of digging through archives, I found some interesting things about the cameras inside the booth. Every time I was finding a new element about the lens, I was lacking any identification infos. I finally found the patent documents for an analog photo booth from 1947. Inside, on page 36, I found an answer. The lens used was a 75mm f2 Volensack portrait lens. Volensack later made a lens specifically for photo booth with the name Photomat a 75mm f4.5. I thought the mystery was solved, until I found another source. A video showcasing the restoration of an old booth showed a few frames of the lens. But this time, it was a Delmayer 75mm f4.5 enlarging lens. From all my online research, I gathered that most lenses were 75mm with relatively slow apertures. So was the mystery solved? Not really. I had to see it for myself. I went back to hunt for real existing booth. The first one I saw in Nantes had a dark window covering the lens. The second one was on a fancy shop in Les Champs Elysees in Paris. It had the lens visible, but partially covered with tape, and the front ring had been removed. However, one element caught my attention. On the side of the lens, you could see the two rabbit ears, typical of Nikkor lenses. This pointed toward the lens originally made for SLR film cameras. Finally, the third booth was in a Parisian museum. Once inside, I saw that the front ring was totally exposed. Sadly, my lamp batteries died because of the cold before I could get a better shot of it. But with my eyes, I could see that it was indeed the same lens at the other booth. It was a vintage Nikon 35mm f2.8, a very common lens for 35mm film cameras, not an enlarger lens at all. So why did the older booth use a 75mm while the ones I found in France use a 35mm? The 75mm lens used in the early American booths was much more flattering for portraits. However, using a 75mm lens required a lot of distance between the camera and the subject, almost 2 meters. To keep the booth as thin as possible, engineers installed a prism in front of the lens. This allowed the camera to be mounted at a 90 degrees angle from the person sitting on the stool, effectively acting like a periscope. But prisms are expensive to manufacture and difficult to keep clean in a public machine. The solution was the 35mm lens. Because it's a wider focal length, it's small enough to point directly at the subject without requiring the booth to be 2 meters deep. As for the f-stop, there was a minimum of f4.5. Sharpness is the priority here. You don't want a shallow depth of field or bokeh 
because the background is right behind the subject and you need their entire head to stay in focus. Now I want to recreate that exact same look at home. I need to find two equivalent lenses, one for the older version and one for the newer version. Before leaving the booth, I had to test it on myself. So I will have the real thing to compare against my results. Now let's see if we can replicate that exact photo booth look. These days, getting your portrait shot in an analog booth is very trendy. And as I witnessed myself, the lines are often very long. But what if you don't live near a big city with one of these rare booths? Yet you still want to experiment with that look. To show you how easy it is, I'm going to recreate the exact same setup as the vintage photo booth. Because the lenses varied between machines, I'll be using the best equivalent I own. For the older version, I'm using a Schneider Kreuznach 75mm f4.5 enlarger lens that I will adapt to my full frame camera. For the newer version, I'll use a Canon FD 35mm f2 concave. I'm using a digital camera for faster results. But you also can use a vintage film camera, of course. First, set your camera to black and white mode or use black and white film. In vintage booths, the silver light paper is extremely slow, around ISO 6. This requires a massive amount of light, which is why they use high output flashes. I've set my camera to these settings. You need to place your flash as close to the lens as possible to get that flat, direct look. Finally, make sure you have a wall or curtain directly behind you, about 20 to 30 centimeters from your head. Now, here's the secret. Keep your camera horizontal. I found that if I used the full vertical sensor, the framing was too narrow and just felt wrong. By shooting horizontally and using only the center of the frame, I was able to match the feel of the original paper strips. Place your camera on a tripod around 150 cm from your chair. The more modern booth require only an 80 cm distance, which I measured myself in the booth. To finish the look digitally, you need a few adjustments. Crush the blacks to lose details in the shadows. Add a green or yellow filter to mimic how old silver or light paper reacts to skin tones. Blow out the whites to mimic the high contrast paper. You will notice the 75mm version looks more flattering and compressed, while the 35mm has a slight distortion that makes it feel more intimate and raw. And if I compare my results to the original strip, it's pretty close. When I first stepped inside that photo booth in the museum cafe, I thought these vintage machines must have some sort of incredible secret optical technology that makes you look cool no matter what. A lens that will be impossible for me to find. What makes this photo booth so special is a nostalgic feeling, being part of an art style and traveling back in time to get a souvenir that is unique and physically in your hands. I would never say that taking these photos with a digital camera at home is the same feeling as stepping into one of those old photo booths. But I had a lot of fun recreating the setup. I hope this video helps you try the same experiment, or better yet, give you the motivation to go out and hunt for these analog dinosaurs yourself. If you're more into lenses with insane swirly bokeh, you might want to check this out. After more than 10 years of testing strange and beautiful vintage projector lenses, I finally gathered everything I've learned into one complete guide. It's called the Projector Lens Handbook, a 130 page ebook packed with my best advice for getting incredible swirly bokeh and unique cinematic images using cheap forgotten lenses. Just click the link in the description to grab your copy. Oh, and if you are a channel member, you get 30% off.